So I'm seeing next to the on here button, there's zero zero. That's nobody's online yet, right? Five people online. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> yes, I'm live. So we are starting in one minute, Reverb webinar series, how to go broke in music. So we're going to be starting 12 o'clock promptly. That is one of the things literally, how to not go broke in music, be on time. So we're going to start on time today. Okay, we have 10 people in the webinar right now. So that's pretty good. Hi, everybody. Okay, it's 12 o'clock, so here we go. Welcome to Reverb webinar series on how to go broke in music. I am your host, Jabari Winchester, and I hope you have a very educated webinar today. It's going to go for one hour, basically 45 minutes and 15 minutes of questions and answers. So get your pen, your pad, your pens and your pads so you could write down any questions that you have for me at the end, or you could put it in the chat box on your right. Okay, we're gonna start today with a little. Okay, one second, just getting this smooth. All right, so we're gonna start on a little biography of myself. As I said, I'm Jabari Winchester. Everybody know me as Short Boss. I am a co-founder of Studio 53, started in 2003. This is basically where my career professionally started as a music engineer and a audio producer. After that, I started to work with a lot of professionals and music elites such as Marsha Montano, Bungie Garland, some of their songs and music production. So basically I record their music, put it together, work with the producers, learn a lot of tips and tricks from them while in those sessions. Currently I am owner or director of CMMG Records, which is a indie startup record label based in Trinidad and Tobago also a music publishing company by the name of Ambitious Media Productions, where I oversee a lot of metadata delivery to PROs, meaning performing rights organization, like COT, for instance, ASCAP, BMI, also DSPs, like iTunes, Spotify, Deezer, those are service, digital service providers that you could stream music from, also CMOs, licensing portals, project management, and artist development. So those are that's my portfolio for now because I'm working on getting it more. So basically the overview of this workshop is going to be on bookkeeping, content registration, and artist development artists for business, business model techniques inclusive of planning a release. So a lot of people are planning a release and they don't know how to actually get the music out. They usually do the typical follow-up of going to the radio station, dropping off a CD to a couple of DJs. And that's just a, a thing that everybody does, but it's not the best thing to do. Okay, and we're also going to work on how to build a credit score as an artist in the music industry of today's world. So don't forget, put your questions on the right hand side. If you have any questions for me, I would definitely get them. Okay, so the importance of bookkeeping. So this is a very, very, very touchy subject and I must touch on it first. So when artists basically has an idea in their head and they call a producer, a songwriter, or anybody involved in their music career to come up with a project, you have to start taking detailed notes in everything that you do from in terms of who you speak with, when you speak with them, what you speak with them about, 
these are all parts of bookkeeping. Also, when you step into the studio with that idea, and you're all building a vibe, you're all in the studio, the vibe is nice, the music playing, whatever is puffing in the air, you want to work on something called a split sheet. They are if you don't want to create an uncomfortable environment, asking each other uh, apps that you could sit in these sessions and use. Later down in the webinar, I'll give you examples of these apps. But split sheets are very important. Basically, that is who owns what in the copyright. So the copyright is basically the idea. When people write songs, they, they compose it to something called a melody, okay? So these are two parts of the copyright. Most likely the musician or the producer is the one that comes up with the melody and the author or the singer or the performer is the one who comes up with the lyrics. And in today's world, the hits that are on the billboard, I could say majority of them, they are combined with about 9.1 writers so all these top 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 hits that you're hearing it's not one person write them it's not two people write them they are approximately nine people that help contribute to those sets today financial statements income statements expenses these are things that you really 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 want to always have a record of when you're into music production or when you're actually working on your career as an artist Basically, when you take these information moving forward, even if you, you are not with the people that you're with now or moving in the future, you have records of what they spend. A lot of managers, a lot of record labels, a lot of artist development personnel who are taking the time to invest into artists, they are not keeping these books. So when the deal goes sour, Everything goes so well. Nobody has a recollection of, okay, I spent 10000 on this person and I spent 5000 on this and I did this and even traveling expense, food expense. While once you're pursuing that music career, you have to have all these records in place. If you don't do these things, you are surely going to go broke. So these things are very, very, very important. So one of the main, 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 main things as an artist, okay, is your alias and registering it properly. And for, in Trinidad, there's a place called Ministry of Legal Affairs. This is a place that you need to go and get your name registered. If it's as a sole trader or a limited liability, it's very, very, very a key factor in the pursuit of your career because you wouldn't like to name yourself Mr. Fly and there's somebody on the other half of the world named Mr. Fly or there's somebody in Shogona's name Mr. Fly and you end up in a position where you print t-shirts, you have your music on the internet and then you go on the internet and you see somebody else by the name of Mr. Fly. Also, when somebody has to write a check or even you, per se, has to look, put up your music on Instagram, and there are other people with these names. So you have to make sure your name is clear first, and registering it is a very, very key and important thing. So you could go to the Legal Affairs and pay about 200 and something dollars to get your name registered as an artist because there's no product that is not registered officially, and you are a product as an artist. Bank account and artist alias. So that same name that you registered, you definitely, definitely want to get it. Get a bank account in that same name, because say your name is yourself, Mr. Fly, nobody's going to write a check to Mr. Fly. They're going to write it to the songwriter if they have to write it to the person who is singing. So you want to be able to collect checks and miss the fly in the future if that is the case. And you need a bank account to do that. One of the recommended bank accounts, I'm not 
promoting for them. But GMB Bank is a very good bank where you could um, get a bank account and there's something also available called a debit card where you could get access to the online dream and subscriptions and even take subscriptions through digital service providers like iTunes, etc. So a bank account is very, very, very important even when you're getting your payments from performances, the money that you make from merchandise, the money that you make from music streaming, you could all deposit it in this bank account. So you could actually have a professional wallet where this money is stored and you could always show accountability of income that was coming in and the money that you're spending. So a bank account is very, very important. Performing rights organizations. Performing rights organization is a company that collects performance royalties and pays them to the songwriter and publisher. A publisher or songwriter can register with a PRO and start collecting royalties owed to them after the PRO takes their fee. So the PRO has something called an administration fee. Most PROs are non-profit organizations, so they don't really make money from collecting royalties. They just take an administration fee for staff and basically to run the business. Okay? These companies generate two unique codes for every individual writer, composer, and copyright content registered with them, which includes a IPI number and an ISWC code. So this IPI number is your birth certificate number as a songwriter. So you cannot be an artist if you have not registered with a PRO. I repeat, you cannot be an artist if you have not registered with a PRO because it's like being born into this world and you have not registered with the hospital. So basically they sneak you out as a baby and you went into the real world and you have no source of identification. So a PRO is very, very, very essential at the beginning of your music career. So all those who are claiming that you are pursuing an artist career and you haven't registered with a PRO yet, get to the closest one. In our region, there is COT, which is Copyright Organization of Trinidad and Tobago. In the U.S. market, there are more than three, but the three that are the main ones are ASCAP, which stands for American Society of Composers, Authors, and Publishers. And also there is BMI. You could look that one up. <laughs> and also there is CSAC. These are the three main companies that affiliate with the US PROs. And in the UK, there are one by the name of PRS. Okay, so these are companies that do performing rights organizations. And the two codes that they generate is the IPI number. So every time you as an individual, as a songwriter, musician, register with a PRO, you automatically generate a code called an IPI code. That code is your personal IPI code as a songwriter. So it doesn't change. And every time you register a song, that code represents you. It goes along with your name and other information. So when you and these songwriters come together, everybody registers a song and you all put your splits in that song automatically generates a code called an, an ISWC code. That ISWC stands for International Standards Works Code. Okay, so that is also a unique identification code for the copyright content that you and your friends or the participating people a part of the composition has registered. So, to make this a little clear, this ISWC code would not generate if 
the participant does not have IPI codes. So for instance, if the songwriter and the composer, if the songwriter alone is registered with a, a PRO and the composer is not registered with a PRO, this ISC, ISWC code have possibilities of not generating. So that means that song, I didn't say it, it is not registered, but there is not a code assigned to it. So there could be problem tracking this composition when that time reaches. So these things are very essential. Each composer writer having the IPI codes and registering the song to get the ISWC code and having this information at hand at all times when you need it. The Board of Inland Revenue, a BIR number. <laughs> okay, so, okay, I jumped a slide a little too fast. So a BIR number is basically a Board of Inland Revenue number. It's your also a identification number in the tax registration office in China and Tobago. It also represents you as it represents as a international tax ID number. So for instance, when you hear an international citizen or individual mentions, they have a social social security number. This is basically your social security number in your region, Trinidad and Tobago. So it's very important to acquire one. Every employee who works in for an organization has one. So as an artist, it is very recommended that you go and apply for one. If you do not have one, if you haven't already obtained one, if you was working by a previous employer. In order for you to find out if you have one, you could go down to the Border Inland Revenue Office and give them your ID card and you could request and find out if you already have one. If you don't have one, there are some procedures where you could basically get one. So you could go on to this site, to the Border Inland Revenue website, and there is a, a section where it's, you could register for the Border Inland Revenue. And this is basically what you're seeing on the screen here is the online application form. So it is available online. A lot of people has been asking these questions or complaining about the different procedures to get it, but it's not very difficult to get. I believe you just have to have a TD form, but if you're self-employed, which most artists are, you just need a certificate of registration, name approval. Basically, that is your artist name being registered with the Ministry of Legal Affairs, a copy of your ID, and a pa or passport. Okay, so you could go in and register for this BIR, this BIR number, or you could do it online. So when you start to do international transactions as an artist, you would see a form, this form a lot. Every time you make money, somebody will hand you this form from the International Society. This form is known as a W-8 Ben form. It's a, a tax form to give the US information on your tax status. So you give them your name, your address, and this tax ID number, okay? So the tax ID number goes in at box six, where you see foreign tax identification number. So that is where your BIR number goes. You are going to see this form in the future. Once you start to do business internationally as a local citizen from Trinidad and Tobago, okay? So get familiar with it. It's a W-8 pen form. So as an artist in China and Tobago, there is some form of document that you could get to make you certified and registered and even recognized as, a, as an artist. In other words, a cultural worker. So there's a ministry by the name of community development and there's a, 
a sub ministry. Um, correct me. Artist registry. Yes, artist registry. So you could go here and apply for this certificate. It's a certificate of recognition. Okay, so what it does, there are benefits of it. There are tax cutback benefits for corporate companies that sponsor you. So you could go on to artistregistrytt.com or just search it in Google and you can find a lot of information on it and all the benefits and how to proceed to apply for it. You could also apply for this online. It's a little lengthy process, but it's worth it. And basically this is a form of identification that you are a cultural worker, that you are an artist, and you basically are um, in the entertainment industry. So it's very, 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 very something very good to go and apply for if you're an artist in the music industry today. Content registration. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with content registration. So when you do a song, a song has two parts. A song has something called a copyright. And that copyright, once it becomes tangible, it comes there something creates called a master okay the master file is exactly what it says it is it's a master the master could be a demo the master meaning it's the first copy or the first original copy of this copyrighted content so in Trinidad and Tobago from the time you take that idea and turn it into something tangible, it is automatically copyrighted. You don't have to notify your, cop your copyright organization that this copyright exists for it to be registered. From the time you make it tangible, if you write this idea on a piece of paper, it is automatically copyrighted. When you go to cut or any performing rights organization, if you notice, the form, it says notification of works. So all you're doing is just notifying them that this copyright exists. So be aware of that from the time you write your work down, it automatically copyrights. And from the time you take this work and put it on something tangible, which is a CD, you record it in the studio and you put it on a flash drive, you automatically create a master. So these two components create a sound. And these two components need registration worldwide for people to know that who the song belongs to. So for future purposes, use usage of the song. Anything generated from the song, they would know exactly who to allocate anything that was generated from it. Okay, so there are different entities in the world that you could actually register this, these form of copyright, if it's the master or the copyright. So earlier when I was mentioning to you about the split sheet. So this is an example of a split sheet here in front of you. So the split sheet, the information on the split sheet, you would see to the top, there's song title. That is the title that you name your song. It's very important at the beginning of a project, you come up with a good name for your song. If you don't have a good name for a song, you need to just come up with one immediately so you can know what to identify the song by. So even if it's Big Up Mama Demo, you should name, you should title it as Big Up Mama Demo in the early stages so you could always access this back in the future. Date. So the exact date that you compose this idea and you put it on something tangible would be a good time to make a record of this date. Okay? Also, there's recording artists. Please note that is different from the person who is writing the song. The recording artist is also referred to as the performer or singer. Next to there, there's something record label. So record label, please don't get mixed up with this. This is an entity that supports the making of a master file. So the same demo that you created when you take, when you made your idea tangible, the entity that funds this. So if the entity is yourself, your friend, your mother, or 
the recording studio that you work with, that person is the record label. They financially support the master to be created. So that entity goes in the record label slot. Also, you want to have vital information as the studio name, where you recorded the song, where the song was produced. You need this information, address in case, for future references, you want to contact, you want to go by the studio. You need to have this information. So having a document where all these things are stored, which is a split sheet, is very vital. Phone number, samples, if it was used in the song, and what artist or album did the sample came from. After that, they are the composers, writers. So these are the people who participated or contributed to the copyright, not the master. Okay, so having all the information is very vital as well. Their name, their address, their phone number. And if that person is signed or has a deal with a publishing entity, this is where this information is also inputted. So the publishing entity also affiliates with a PRO. So this is where you could enter the information as well of the affiliating PRO of the publisher and the songwriter. In most cases, and it's kind of a protocol mandatory case, a publisher has to always be in the same PRO as the songwriter. So a publisher who is publishing with BMI, I'm not saying he cannot publish somebody who is in court, but it's, it is very important that that publishing entity is registered in the same PRO with the songwriter. So a songwriter could only register with one PRO or there's options for that PRO to cover a specific region and, and partner with another PRO for that other PRO to cover another region. For instance, Trinidad could be your PRO, excuse me, sorry, Cut could be your PRO for Trinidad region and ASCAP could be your PRO for the United States region. So BMI for the United States, if a publisher is registered with BMI, he, that publisher could cover the United States and you could have a separate publisher for Trinidad and Tobago to cover in, in cut. So this is where the copyright and the participants information is inputted and documented on this document called a split sheet. So it's vital and you need it at the beginning of the stage of putting together your composition. So these are the information that your PRO collects when they register your song. Okay, so to highlight it, there are, if you could see it circled, there's the ISWC code to the top. That is the International Standard Works Code. That is a code that, that generates when you register a PRO. You register a content with a PRO, okay? So the works, that same International Standard Works Code also has a works ID in the um, PRO as well. So the International Works Code is a general code. Everybody could access that code and it's worldwide. And the Works ID, that is an internal code for ASCAP in terms of songs that they have in their repertoire, what they're dealing with. And you could also see every individual songwriter and the publisher has their own IPI code. So that is the identification code for every participant, a part of this copyright. So for independent artists and producers, the easiest way to distribute your content worldwide is to use our distribution service, which is Ambitious Media Production. That's the company that I, work, I own. Our company is a third party company that offers packages allowing you to sell your music through multiple channels, including iTunes, Apple Music, Spotify, and 190 something more. 
So there are a lot of places that you could distribute your music and have it worldwide. There are also online aggregators that you could use, including TuneCore, Ditto, Amuse, just to name a few. I'm not selling their business. So when you register that master, you need to distribute it some form or fashion. So uh, normally artists, the bad practice, what they do, they burn it on a CD and give it to a DJ or upload it to YouTube. But that doesn't mean it's distributed. So it is required to have a UPC code and an ISRC code on everything that you upload. UPC stands for Unique Product Code and is used by stores and distributors to track the sale of your product, whether an album, EP, or single track. These are the barcodes you see on a CD or other merchandise. ISRC stands for International Standards Recording Code and is a unique 12 character num alphanumeric digital fingerprint, fing fingerprint that stays with an individual recording forever regardless of the changes in ownership. So this ISWC code stays with that song. So every song that you export from your DAW, meaning your door, your digital audio workstation, has to has, have an ISRC code. Once you're planning on distributing it, once you're planning on giving it to a friend, once you're planning on giving it to a DJ, that is like the number plate on a car. So you must assign one of those things to every MP3 or WAV file you export. Okay, so even though you sell the song to an entity, this code stays with that song. So there are different elements of that code. The first two figures of this, this 12 digit code is referred to as the your origin. So every country has different origin codes. So for, for instance, Trinidad and Tobago has TT. The US will have US at the beginning of their codes, and so on and so forth. This ISRC is added as metadata. Metadata means information to the audio digital file prior to the release and is used to trace sales of the individual track through various digital distributors and broadcast channels. In summary, this UPC covers an entire album or the other product much, while the ISRC is a digital code that is affixed to every individual track in order to account for each sale of that single of that single track. So the album has the UPC and the songs has the ISRC, which is very, very, very important when you put out music out there. So if you haven't assigned a UPC code or an ISRC code to one of your songs previously re released, you're going to go broke. You need to assign these things to every song that you upload to the, to the, to the track. So basically the metadata. And a distributor usually assign these codes when you're uploading it. So for instance, a lot of you might use Foxfuse or TuneCore or um, CD Baby to upload music to the internet. And they automatically generate these codes for you. Currently, Cut has become our ISWC manager. So they have, they have ISRCs to generate for you directly from Trinidad and Tobago. And the UPC code, you have to get that from your digital distributor or aggregator. So you need, one, you need these two codes to assign to a master and also the ISWC code to the copyright, which will automatically be generated when you register with a PRO, which is a performing rights organization. For example, cut. So these information you see on your screen here right now is the metadata information that applies to a song. So for instance, a car, there is the chassis number, there's the registration number on the number plate. There is maybe a serial number somewhere in the car, but there are a lot of information 
on that car. Sometimes it tells, not sometimes, all the time it, it tells you the maximum gross weight, the tear weight, and all these different information you can find on the car, the specs of the car. So this is basically the specs on a song, a master, and the copyright. So this metadata information is very, very important to have embedded in your song. If you don't know how to do it, your PRO or your distributor helps you do these things, okay? So on your left, you can see there's the ISRC codes. I could pinpoint it a little more. The ISRC codes, it begins with TT. So it's next to the label. It shows that is the origin company that owns that song that actually generates that ISRC. On top of that, you could see the track artist, you would see track title, you would see version mix, and then you would see recipients exchange. So that is the company that actually received this information. And what type of registration it is in the top and left hand corner, it was radio airplay monitoring. It has the date it was submit submitted, who it was submitted by, and on your right hand side you would see circled is also the UPC code for this specific release. So you would see all this information is very vital to be embedded in your MP3. So this is some more information here that could be gathered from the copyright of your song. So it's just like the information from the split sheet but that information also needs to be registered with organizations worldwide to understand that these songwriters were the people who participated in creating this copyright. So here's some more information on metadata. So it shows the studio venue where it was recorded, the master rights owner, how much percentage they own, and where do they collect the territory they collect. So majority of people do it worldwide and there are majority of labels that basically cover specific territories. So there could be more than one master rights holder and they cover different different territories. So these are a few services that ambitious media production offer. Catalog management, rights administration, distribution, digital campaign marketing, music publishing, audio video production. So these are the different services that we offer that could help you get your content properly registered to any organization worldwide. So when your content is being used on the other half of the world, any organization that seeks this information would know exactly where to find it. If, if, it is, if it doesn't exist, they're not going to call your cell phone and ask you, John Bob, do you own this song? Okay, so you have to make this information available for the world to see. Artist business model. So an artist business model is basically for you to understand how, who, you're going to be interacting with to make money today. So if you're recording songs, you're doing music, you're a musician, if you're a policeman, no, no, I read, I take that back. If you're a business owner, a construction owner, anything that, you, any business that you're in, you have to have a business model. You have to understand the business model. An artist today does not understand the business model. So I'm going to go through a very, quick presentation of how to build your business model. So there are nine segments of a business model. The main segment is known as the value proposition. So this is where you figure out your product and wh what is gonna make you valuable to the market and basically what you're selling, what makes it so unique. So you have to always ask yourself, what makes me unique in this world, in this music industry? Uh, am I a soul artist? Do I sing really good? Do I have a big catalog? You need to figure out these things to actually give yourself an idea of what you're actually doing. 
So for example, we have hit songs, a good image, a character, you could have high influence and a large repertoire. Repertoire meaning a lot of songs, cat catalog. So that could be somebody's value proposition. They know, hey, people is going to want to listen to my music because my music is good or I have a good image or they're going to feel my, my, this weird character of me because a lot of people like 6 9 he has hair. Um, yeah, different people with different characters. There's Prince Swanee. He's pushing the whole Zessin vibes. So that is his character. So you have to find your character as an artist today to know where you fit and where you stand out as well. Influence, you have to have a very good influence. So these are, these are things that you need to figure out if these are your strong points. Okay? Second part of this business model you have to look at is on your right hand side or your left, customer segment. Okay, so these are the people who you who consider as your customers. So definitely fans, people who listen to your music. You have to figure out who are these people. If they are old people, if they are young people, if they are people living in Japan, if they like um, Christian music, if they like um, dance or music, who are your fans? You have to know who are your fans and where they are. Okay, another customer of you as an artist is a promoter because you need a promoter to basically hire you. So you need to get a list and start to understand who's the promoters that may want to hire you and start to literally target these people one by one. So if you're a DJ, if you're an artist, if you're a musician, who's the people who's going to hire you? Okay, so we also have music supervisors record labels and music publishers. Music supervisors are people who actually scout music to put into movies, games, and any way that they legally need music to use. Okay, record labels are supporting entities basically. So remember I spoke earlier on any individual or entity that helps you create that master or fund that master is considered as a record label. So you yourself could be your own record label. A lot of artists today is setting up their own record labels to be independent. And then once you have your content on your record label, you could sign more artists. You could even sell your record label, or you could even get a, a, a bigger record label, a major record label deal, even though you personally has a record label. I would advise if a lot of artists start up their own record labels, if they have a vision, on what they want to do, if they want to work with a lot of art, more artists collaborating with them, start up a record label. There's a lot of research on the internet, you could go and get a lot of information. And music publishers, as we spoke about earlier, it's very essential to a songwriter and musicians, and they help shop your copyright content. So the record label helps shop the master, and the music publisher helps shop the copyright content. So the next segment of this business model is the channel. That is where, that is how your product gets to your consumer or your fan or the customers. How are you going to get the product to them? So your music, how your music is going to reach these people. There's a true, well, t today's world, there's digital service providers, DSPs, which is like iTunes, YouTube, Deezer, Spotify, other platforms that you could be familiar, you are familiar with, that how you consume music. So you have to know where people consume your music, how people is going to consume your music. If it's via CDs, if it's via email, online marketing, if it's via social media, how they are going to get your music, what medium they are going to use to get your music. Cust customer relationship. That is basically how the customer is going to actually want to consume more of your content. So you, you have to know how the customer is going to access, um, basically continue accessing the music. So we have street team campaigns, we have social media, we have traditional media, playlist placement and product placement. So product placement could work from putting your song in a digital ad, Street campaign could be from having a team giving away flyers. Social media could be from posting regularly. Traditional media mean from going to radio. Playlist placement meaning 
catching his song on Private Ryan's latest mix. So when Private Ryan plays, he puts out his CD. If your song is number three, every person who listens to Private Ryan's CD, they're going to listen to your song at number three. You're guaranteed going to listen to your song. So that is what you call playlist placement. It is very, very, very important. A playlist is basically a place where one song comes after the next, one song comes after the next. So a CD is considered a playlist. When you're listening to radio, the person who is programming the music that you're listening to is somebody called a playlist curator. So that is a playlist that you're listening to. If you on your phone have, on your phone have 10 songs playing one after the next, that is a playlist and you are your own playlist curator. Okay, so the next part I'm going to jump to is the revenue streams. So you have to understand where your revenue is coming from as an artist, a musician, as a DJ, as, as a content creator. So right now we have royalties, that is from PROs, CMOs. We have tours, basically booking gigs, shows, going to concert venues, doing bars, doing restaurants. If you're performing in casinos, you have to figure out where it is I could generate revenue from with my songs. If you don't know, you could research and actually figure out where it is your, your revenue is going to be coming from. Sync deals, as we were talking about earlier with music supervisors, sync deals is basically an opportunity for your music to be placed in a movie, a song track, collaborate on a compilation, in a video game, in an advertisement, anywhere your music could be used for a corporate entity or any company that uses your music while they are making money. Okay, another revenue stream is merchandise, putting your, your songs, your album covers, your, your face on merch. Okay, YouTube, and there's a new thing called cryptocurrency. I don't want to get into that now, it could be a long discussion. So the next thing on this business model is your key partners. You have to know who are the people you're collaborate, collaborating with during your journey. If it's influencers, if it's DSPs, if it's songwriters, producers, record labels, publishers, promoters, program directors, playlist curators, corporate brands, publicists. These are people who you really want to have a good relationship with. So you can figure out who are these people in your region and start building a database for these people and actually communicating with these people. Key activities. These are the things you're constantly going to be doing during your progress of creating your song. So you're going to be doing a lot of recording music. You're going to be performing a lot of gigs. You're going to be doing a lot of social media activities. If it's posting, if it's going live, if it's commenting, these are things that you actually want to be doing a lot. Releasing music, having music on the platforms constantly. If it's every month, every three months, every quarter, try and release a lot of music. So this should be one of your key activities that you do constantly. And campaigning basically is promoting the music that you're releasing. You have to continue to be promoting the music. Going to the radio station doesn't mean that alone is promoting music. Key resources. Key resources are the things that you have that is going to cut or eliminate costs in you getting to the product that you have, that, that you're trying to create. So if you're a music producer, if you're an artist and you have your own home studio, that is a key resource. If you have your own record label with the financial support, with all these different backends, that is a key resource. Having a music publisher on your side, that is also basically a key resource. And then there is course structure. This is all the expenses that you're going to incur in creating this product that you have in your music, which could include music videos, graphics for artwork, graphics for promotional content on social media, also image. So that could be from clothing because you have to make appearances. So you're going to be spending a lot of money on your image. Or if you get a sponsor, and that person could help eliminate costs with your image. Marketing campaigns, promoting the song, placements, if it's Facebook ads, if it's paying one of them DJs some underhand money, <laughs> which is payola, which I don't advise you to do. 
um, subscriptions, these are all cost structured. So you need to figure out all the things that you're going to be facing while you're getting your music done. And just think about it heavily and make a note of all these things. So the revenue and the cost structure is two of the main things that you really want to be open about. So when, you, when you're going to do a project, you're going to want to study where your revenue is coming from. And you're going to want to study what expenses that you're going to be facing during this project. So every business must have a business plan. So you as an artist also must have a business plan. So I'm going to speed up a little bit. I'm going to take your questions. So at the beginning of every business plan, there's a mission. You must know what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. Okay? You must have a team with you. It could be you, your grandmother, and your sister on that team, or your manager, your publicist, to build this team. You must have the music. Yes, you must figure out how you're going to manufacture it, you're going to distribute it, market it, do music videos, get merchandise, concert promotions. You have to have a business plan. You have to figure it out before you start. Please get these things written down. It could be scrappy. It doesn't need to be the cleanest amount of documents, but you just need to do this. And a thing that I like to do, I like to use a whiteboard big whiteboard so anybody you involved with could see the picture and everybody could be on the same page. So this is a case study here on a seven track project. The name of this project is Crystal Blanket. I'm also promoting this so you can see it. <laughs> so it's a seven, prep, seven track project and you have to figure out what, where you're going to make revenue and what are your expenses doing this. So you have to give your project some sort of value. So after you figure out all your expenses, that could be a starting point of the value of your project. So for instance, this project it had seven tracks on it, and you could see a summary of the expenses incurred. So even though you, you might not pay for these things, you have to give it a value. So if you have your own studio and you spend five hours in the studio, you have to give that five hours value and record it. So here there's seven songs and there's a producer fee of $35,000. So seven songs, if you do the maths, you could just divide it. It could be that's 5,000 a song, am I right? Do the maths right? 5,000 a song. And studio expenses, there's 32,000 production costs, mixing engineer, artwork, photo shoots, traveling, administration all totaled up to 114,000, approximately 115,000. So you could see where on the pie chart to the top left hand corner, where the majority of the resources went. It went into the producer and the studio expense. So that was where the majority of the expenses actually went. Okay, so you must put a value to your project. So this is the team that you want to build around your artists. If you notice, the artist is in the center. There's the publisher, there's the manager, and there's the agent. So the artist is the one with the content. The artist is the one who should be focusing on creating the content. The manager is usually the person who helps that artist make decision in his music career. A manager is not a person who buys you clothes and pays for all your stuff. I don't want to use the other word, and babysits you and carries you around. He kind of has that job, but that is not his portfolio really. He's just to make sure all the decisions that you make in the music industry are good decisions. And you don't, you pay him. He takes a commission of whatever income that you earn. This fee is usually between 10 to 15%. In the early half of your career, you don't necessarily need a manager. A manager could be your best friend, your writing partner, somebody close to you always seeks your interest in your music until you get somebody really professional who actually knows the business and who will actually seek your interest. So a manager is literally somebody who seeks your interest in the music industry and wouldn't take advantage of you, advantage of you as well. So there's the publisher, there's the agent. The agent is somebody who actually gets bookings for you. In your region, 
and there are sub agents in other regions so for instance you could have somebody here if you're based in arima you could have somebody looking for gigs in arima and then you could have somebody who is in port of spain they are just looking for gigs in port of spain and you could have somebody in south trinidad they are just looking for gigs in south trinidad or you could have somebody in the uk just looking for gigs for you in the uk so on and so forth if you understand the drift that i'm going at so these people's sole purpose is, is to work with concert promoters and get you bookings and just find bookings for you and they would have a, a commission fee of between five to fifteen percent it varies you could google it and you could get more solid figures to work with and on the right hand side with the publisher it also works hand in hand with sub publishers in different regions and above the, man the manager there's the record label or a and r so that is the company that helps bring talent producers make sure your projects work, comes out properly they help you help you support help support you with projects and get your work off the ground also if you notice there's publicists between the radio and the manager so the publicist the ones is the one that relates all your your releases and anything that you're doing to the media okay and there's also radio promoters and distributor so we explained those earlier and earlier on there so this is a short overview of what is happening in 2018 in the music industry so if you could see the physical had a big gain in the early half of in the past two decades so in 2001 the music industry was 23.9 billion dollars and physical had a majority to do with it for years that has taken place until i'm jumping to 10 years forward which is 2011 from 23 billion to 8 billion so physical sales include cd sales basically cd sales so and record sales so that's when everything was really 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 booming for the music industry but then piracy came in and that started drop so if you notice it dropping down there so all those billions you see dropping down that is every time you went on youtube and rip a song and borrow somebody's cd and put something on a flash drive that is what was making the music industry drop and the revenue generated from it so in 2000 2005 is where streaming came in and actually started building back the music industry in 20, 2010 so when everything was on decline everything started back to raise when streaming was gets more prominent in cities and countries so the top 10 music markets in the world is the united states japan uk germany france South Korea, China, Australia, Canada, and Brazil. So the music global market has grown in 2018 by 9.7% 9, 9 from 2017 to 2018. So the stats for 2019 hasn't come out yet, but I believe it's growing rapidly. More as streaming is coming more prominent in everyday life. So as an artist, we was discussing the business plan you have to figure out where and when you're going to make money so you have to watch a calendar and understand okay where is my peak times and where is my down times if you're a soca, soca artist you're going to know where your peak times and down times are so december november october september i just went to the end of the year is that we traditionally know that's when our soca season really kicks in so september october is where the band launching starts and happens and then november december is where the fets start to come in one by one chip chip and everybody starts to release a lot of music so in december that's where the fets kick in and then january february is where all the fets are so you have to know okay these are the strong points these are the times that i need to get gigs if you're a soak artist if you're in other region other genres you could see I have April, July, and August. So these are basically the, the holiday areas where there are a lot of events. So in April, there's the two weeks, there's the Easter time, 
there's a lot of events around that time. Even though for the rest of the year, there are a lot of events just, just happening on the whole, internationally, regionally, but these are just the peak times of these events, of, of these in our region where they are heavy events and you could actually look for bookings. So if you add up all this year, January, February, July, August, December, and the two weeks, one weeks in April, September, and October, that is basically six months out of the year that you could, is peak time. So six months out of the year, that is, um, or that is close to 25 weeks, 26 weeks of heavy promotion that you could get kicked. So every week you need to just figure out, okay, could I get one book in a week, two book in a week and do the maths. So if I work for $2,500, $2,500 a gig, do the maths, I need 25 bookings in a year just to hit a specific quota. So the minimum wage for an artist, not for an artist, for an individual, is between sixty to seventy-five thousand. So as an artist, we kind of go for the hundred thousand figure. So uh, twenty-five hundred, twenty-five hundred dollar booking, you need to at least get twenty, twenty-five, thirty of those to actually be in that figure of earning more than sixty thousand dollars, more than minimum wage. So that is one avenue that you could use for revenue and understanding that. Also, there's streaming income. So a decent minimum wage in the US is 1500 US, which is 10,000 TT. So 10,000 by 12 is 120,000. That's how I arrived at that figure earlier on. So Apple Music is our highest gross streaming platform. And 200,000 streams should get you at that minimum wage, which is that 10,000 TT figure. So 200,000 streams on Apple Music could get you 10,000 every month. So on YouTube, you need 2 million streams to get you that 10,000 figure. So you need to understand where you need to shop your music. So if you're working with 120,000, so for the year you have six months of heavy performing time and you have your music streaming on the internet so you need to know okay these are the different avenues that i can actually make money from so i need x amount of streams i need x amount of performances to hit this don't start the year if you don't have the year plan so plan these things before the year to understand okay i'm going to be you have a projection Okay, I need to get X amount of streams, I need to get X amount of performances and work towards it, stick to it. It's going to change as you go along. So be aware of it, do not afraid to adjust it. So to break even to that expense that we just saw earlier on in creating the project is $115,000. You need 24 shows during that six months period at a wage of 25 to $3,000. So you need 24 shows and you need 17,000 streams per month. You also need to sell at least five merchandise, right? um, merchandise. If it's five jerseys per month at $100 per month. And you need to at least get one sync deal for the year. And you need to at least get 100,000 streams a month to arrive at this $115,000 figure a year. So making that a lot easier, you need to figure out the content that you're releasing. One song with doing all of that is kind of incredible. So the more songs, the more content you produce, doing this could be a lot easier. So having 10 songs streaming on YouTube, trying to get 100,000 streams per month, that is 10,000 streams per, per song per month. If you do the maths, if you have 20 songs, do the maths, you cut it down. Okay, so these are the figures here. If you notice, what generates the most money for artists in Trinidad and Tobago is touring, performing. That 24 shows at $2,500 could generate close to $60,000 for you. And this is low budget artists. Artists is upcoming artists who's, who, who's now coming into the arena. 
So if you notice where the, the, this, the majority of the income really comes from, touring. The next highest revenue stream is royalties and sync. And YouTube has a 9% revenue stream in terms of 9% of that $115,000 per year. Social media platforms. So these are the platforms that you're going to use heavily to campaign and get your music out there. So as we could see, Facebook is very prominent. Which of the following channels does your business use currently? So 93% of them said Facebook. Twitter was the next highest. Instagram is the next highest. Which one is the most influential when doing marketing campaigns? Instagram. We all know that. That's the big boy there. And then Facebook. And Twitter. There's a new app right now that is very, very, very prominent called TikTok. So please be aware of TikTok. It's very, very useful. Please check it out. Insurance. So... There's something called Board of Inland, no, not Board of Inland Revenue, NIB, National Insurance Board. So when you with an employer, your employer usually takes a certain percentage out of your income and pays it to this national insurance. So later on in life, you could seek specific benefits. If you have having health issues, pension, accident, life insurance. As an artist, an entrepreneur, it is not possible for you to do that. So in order for you to do that, you have to take out an insurance policy with an insurance firm. It is very vital. Please do not underlook the situation because as an artist, you want to create a situation where if you get damaged, there's something wrong with your health, if you end up in an accident, you have some sort of income to support you. So take another insurance plan as soon as you understand that you're making that 24 shows or you're making insur or you're making a decent income. It is very, very, very important because artists, there is no entity as an entrepreneur or an artist to actually secure these things for you. So you must put these things in place for yourself. So. I'm going to get into some short tools quickly before I go into questions and answers. Um, song chat to basically cut down on your studio expense as an artist to not be running in the studio every minute. There's this app called song chat. It's a multi recorded app, a multi track recording app where you could record your content and basically share it with other content creators. So for instance, if I want to record a song, if I'm just like here vibing with you and I'm getting an idea, I will pull out my song trap app and record that idea into that app. And they might, I might be working, I might be good friends with a real good musician that might be in Brazil. So I could tell him download the app and I would share this link to this app with him. And now he now could just open the app and get into that same project that I was working on. And he now could add his creative influence into that project. And then now, that, if that is the demo stage, we could then now send that same um, link to somebody in a professional studio, and they now could take it from there. So it's a very cost-effective way to get your projects off the ground and start it. Song Trap, it was created by Spotify. It's free, there's a premium plan, and there's also an educational tutorials where you could go through and be like certified in the app. Something to capitalize on, uh, uh, DSP that is available in Trinidad, and it gives you the opportunity to monetize your content and earn money while people is consuming your music. Audio Mac, it's very, very powerful. I believe Music TT has just partnered with them in some form. So you could call in, check in, and find out some more information on that. I can't give you much information on that, but I know it's true. So you can find out. But it's a very, very, very powerful, powerful app. And also, in our region, our most powerful DSP right now is YouTube because it's a freemium plan. Nobody pays for music. But 
there's also a DSP that is in our region that is accessible, that you don't need a, a credit card to actually take a subscription, and it's ours. It's Digicel D Music. Okay, so it's very powerful. Um, you could subscribe. You could get a plan with this through your your prepaid plans or your postpaid plans. Every time you take a plan, you automatically get access to these to this app called Digital D Music. And there's also a premium subscription where you could actually get more options. So the first tier is basically a chart, they call it chart topples. So you can't really skip through the music as much as you want to skip through. But you could skip through the music. So I am going to go and take some of your questions now. So Looking at the chat box here. So I have a question from Maria. Would you recommend signing up with ASCAP even though I'm currently based in Trinidad? I wouldn't I wouldn't say I would recommend, but it is an option. I honestly would kind of recommend COTT because they are in our region, but ASCAP is an option. What you could do is do a joint membership. So you could go to COTT and tell them that you want to partner with ASCAP and they would give you a letter to let ASCAP cover the United States region and COTT would cover your region. So you could even do two or you could even, I would recommend using your home base PRO. But your home base PRO is not so full so like ASCAP, basically. So Maria has another question. Can you register with a US and UK PRO? Yes, you could register with a US and UK PRO. So another question here is, what are the most essential steps to releasing a single without going broke? Using the internet as is at your disposal, using social media to promote and word of mouth, going in the streets, talking to people, building awareness of your content, doing flyers. People will do flyers for parties, they'll do flyers for birthdays, but they wouldn't do flyers for their song. Um, recently I was in the international doing a conference and a record label was, had a street team on the streets promoting a song that I am fully aware of that has millions of views on YouTube, but they are still doing street promo, street promo. So street promos are a very effective way, building awareness, going to bars, going to to, to pubs and just getting your music out there. That is a very, very cost effective. Going for another question. <laughs> Thanks, DC. <laughs> okay, what is the effective way to submit live performances to cut? An effective way? Um, basically, everywhere your artists perform, you must make uh, a note of their performances. Getting a uh, one performance sheet and photocopying it and always having it in your disposal so you can always follow it out. So every time your artist is going to perform, you go with them and you follow out your, your performance sheet, DVD promoter one time and do not wait too late, as it's fresh in your head, the next day, drop it off at the PRO. So, Anton, this video would be on Music TT YouTube channel after. So tomorrow you could go and check it out. So, access registry, Maria, 
you need to go into artificial strategy <laughs> and get some information or you could go online it's very 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 there's a lot of information there but i believe every artist upcoming artist in china and tobago should register with this and have this as an a part of their repertoire or resume Okay, we don't have much answers here. I believe I answered majority of the questions. What is the paperwork you provided available elsewhere? Um, the paperwork that you could get online is the split sheets. And that is basically the first thing you should have when you are coming up with any song, working in the studio with any producer. As I advise you, there's an app called Splits. I'm just going to type it really quick in the chat box. You could go on the App Store and look for this app by the name of Splits. Um, there is no time or it's never too late to submit live, live performance forms to cut. I think if once you remember it, submit it. Do not sit there and say, wait, it's too late. Go and drop it in. <laughs> so Rhythm Rider says, what about if you do all those things and still broke? Be consistent. Work on it. <laughs> That's what I honestly tell you. <laughs> Be consistent and have these practices your time is going to come but when you quit is that's when you are going to stay broke but be consistent and you definitely something is going to happen so folks i think that is all the time i have for today i hope you guys enjoyed the webinar on how to go broke in music. My name is Jabari Winchester and peace out.